My gauge, this only has like 25 pounds, so let's get the head off of this thing and let's see if we can figure out what's going on. I've got the carburetor removed, I've got the engine shroud removed. I'll take this cover back off. And let's see what we can find. It's, what is these? It's a 10 mil. I want to put this back on top dead center. There's exhaust is open, intake's opened. Come back up and according to the flywheel. Right there should be top dead center. The cam is still lined up. So that hasn't changed any. So in order to get the head off, you got to take the rocker arm assembly off, and then you get the cam off. Then you can remove the head. So do this a little at a time so you don't warp it. Kind of rotate back and forth. You want to pull this off even. There we go. I also got to take the cam, uh, the cam chain tensioner. I got to take out loose. Get this these bolts pulled off here first. Stuck on there. There we go. I like keeping the bolts together with everything. Now the cam chain is loose, so it'll be easy to pull this off. And if you notice, keep track of how it goes. You got an X, so that's going to be the exhaust, and XO, that's going to be intake. So when you put this on, make sure it's that way. And this will come off as an as one piece. The rocker arms and everything. And there you go. Now you can get to the cam. And just slip the timing chain off. Cam chain's off. Something that I should have done. I'm going to grab a piece of wire or something to hold the timing chain. Which let me go get one. Because you don't want that to slide down inside the case. Because that could be a pain in the butt to dig back out. Just wrap it around to hold it. See if we can get the head to pop loose. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. 
minute. Got two more little bolts on this side. I almost forgot those. They are easy to overlook, as you can just see. They take the 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. The same as the bolts for your valve cover. And they're long. So it's not like you can get these mixed up with anything. And now the head is wiggling. Get it to pop off of the locating pins. is off. Ooh, I believe I see why the, what the problem is. Let me come around here and show you. You can see intake's valve has got quite a bit of rust and corrosion on it. I bet you anything that is not sealing. I have to get these valves out and clean them up. So you can see the piston. It's got some corrosion going on. Also, one thing's for sure, the head's getting enough oil. Hopefully that has not done any damage to the cylinder. Let me lower it down some here. See if I can get a good look at the cylinder. doesn't look bad. <clears throat> it's discolored a little bit, but I do not feel any deep scratches in it. So, I have a feeling if I just clean up the clean up the valves on the head the compression will come back and this should run. And that's where the exhaust valve, I think I said intake, it's the exhaust that has the corrosion going on with it. So let's get the head up onto the bench, pull the valve out, and let's see what's going on. Alright, I got the little keepers removed. Get the springs off of it. Pull the valve out. Oh yeah, look at the seat on that thing. There's no way that was sealing up. Not sure how well this is showing up on the camera. That all needs to be cleaned up. Let's get the intake valve out and see what that one's like. Might as well do both. 
keepers are off of the intake. The intake valve doesn't look much better. It looks a little better, but not much. To me, like his motor's been sitting outside. That's another reason why you don't leave these things sitting around. Otherwise, you get to rebuild them. Get this valve seats cleaned up. Get these valves cleaned up and see what happens. Alrighty, I got the valve seats cleaned up. Didn't take much to do those. Those are just some surface stuff. And I got the valves cleaned up. It was pretty easy to do. Not too bad. Let's get these put in. And then we'll do a leak down test to see if they're going to hold. All right, I got the valves back in. Now let's do a leak down test and see if they're going to leak. The way you do that is just take some gas and make sure your spark plug is in. Which it's not in all the way. I, gotta, I need to screw that in further. But anyway, you fill this up with gas. Let it sit for about a minute or so. Then take a flashlight and shine inside and look at the valve stems if it gas or if the seats are not sealing you'll see gas leaking down on the valve stem on the intake and on the exhaust both as of right now probably can't see in there very well right now the valve stems are dry so if it's leaking we'll be able to see very good let me get the spark plug Put in there farther. All right, I got it put back together. Ready to try this again and see if it'll fire up and run. Keep your fingers crossed. Here we go. Definitely getting enough gas.
I'm going to take the carburetor off, drain the float bowl, drain out some of this gas and see if it's any good. Because I have a feeling it's not. That's the next step. Alright, I got the muffler on. Let's see if it will with the muffler running. Okay, let's give this another try. See what'll happen here. I'll just kick it over. need to do some fine tuning to the carb. Cool. I guess I'll let them know that I was able to get it running and see what they want to do with it now. Perfect. <laughs> 